625 the time. Uh, almost 200,000 new homes were built in England last year. Demand is growing, and I didn't know this, there's a shortage of bricks, apparently. Ben's got the details. Uh, morning to you. Yeah, welcome to uh, the Midlands. Sorry, we're just trying to work out whether we've managed to stop the machine working with all our kit here this morning. But, uh, yeah, welcome to the Midlands. We're here whether there is a national shortage of bricks because uh, there's a concern among some builders having to wait six months to get their supplies delivered to them. And that, of course, having a huge knock-on effect for the construction industry. So we're here at Ketley Brig, uh, Bricks in the Midlands. And look, this is what a brick to, uh, starts out life as. This is some of the clay that's been dug out of a quarry just around the corner from here. And look, this is how it turns out when it's been through the entire process uh, the benefits are being taught. This is a finished brick. It's been fired in the kiln here. One of the 25,000 they make every single day, the 7 million every year. So we're looking at what these guys can maybe do to get more bricks uh, made and delivered to the builders that need them. And we'll talk about what it means for the construction industry a little later. But before that, we're going to get the news, the travel and the weather where you're watching breakfast this morning. We go to see places where things are made. Mm. Ben this morning is at a brick factory because, Ben, we understand that the price of bricks is actually going up. Yeah, some might call this a niche interest, Charlie, but nonetheless, yeah, welcome to the Midlands where we're talking about these things um, because there is potentially a shortage. Some builders in the country reporting delays of getting deliveries and that could have a huge knock-on effect for the wider industry and particularly when it comes to house building because we're told we need to build more. Well, Alex is a boss here. Alex, good morning. Um, good morning look, we're surrounded by thousands and thousands of bricks here. There's no shortage, is there? Well, as you can see, we've probably got a couple of million bricks here and... Um, there's a seasonality to these things. I think as an industry, we manage these things pretty well. We make more bricks than we sell in the winter, and then we run those stocks down over the summer. And equally over the business cycle, um, when there's surges in demand, we'll run our stocks down to hopefully supply um, you know, the demand that's out there. And you've been making bricks on this site, and I should stress, not you personally, but since the early 1800s. Well, we're a family business, <laughs> and um, we've been operating on this site since 1805. So you must have seen the sort of the peaks and the troughs. I mean, how does this compare? I think, um, you know, we've had these surges in demand before, and I think when we've looked at it in aggregate, there hasn't been really any particular shortage overall it's if you have a particular brick type that um, you might need for your development you know I would encourage developers to talk to manufacturers as soon as possible to make sure they understand what the lead times are mm. so that they can be supplied when they need them okay for now Alex good to talk to you thanks, thanks very much well come with me because Kate's with us she's a property expert and Chris who's a, a local builder and um, morning to you both um, maybe Chris if I start with you because it is smaller builders that potentially are most affected by this this shortage tell me what it's like for you are you seeing a shortage and also prices going up? There's definitely a shortage but I mean it's something we need to be more organised with ordering. I think that's what the brick manufacturers will tell us that we need to pre-order and get the orders in. It's more difficult for the smaller builders that are doing extensions and, and small one-off properties trying to get the bricks but if you pre-order with a brick company yes there is a shortage but you just, just plan it ahead. And what does it mean for you day to day if there's a shortage? Does it mean that it takes you longer to build a house? It does, it takes a bit longer, it's longer to get started and that obviously affects your cash flow as well. When you can't get the brick layers going then you're struggling to get the houses finished you don't get your money so it can be a bit of a problem yeah and Kate I mean we're constantly told aren't we that as a country we need to build more houses that's the only way to solve the property crisis this isn't going to help is it well it's not but this is manufacturing at the end of the day and you're building a house and there are thousands of elements that go in it mm. so you are going to come across problems anybody out there in manufacturing for food I think we've seen a vanilla crisis currently for ice cream manufacturers at the <laughs> moment these things are always going to be here I think there was a fence crisis a few years ago so we've just got to get better as an industry at solving the problem. But it is quite hard. I mean, it's quite interesting. About 25% of detached homes are actually built by the self-build industry. So you go in for your planning. You're not going to order your bricks before you get your planning, just in case. And then maybe you've got to wait. I was talking to some of my local guys about 12 to 16 weeks before they turn up on site. So there is a delayed factor. But, you know, as Chris says, it's all about planning as much as you can. OK, Kate, Chris, really good to see you. Thanks very much. Um, so there's the current sort of state of play as far as these things are concerned. But as you can see, I mean, hundreds of them here, thousands of them on the site here in the Midlands. But these will be sold up and down the country. Uh, but clearly, uh, as you heard there too, it's about planning. Learn what you need when you're building a house and make sure you put your order in soon enough. Thanks, Ben, very much. See
Our main story, the government has announced the bosses of companies which make nuisance calls could be personally fined up to half a million pounds. A consultation on changes to the law begins today. In October 2016, the government made a similar pledge, but the necessary legislation wasn't passed. Andy Moore explains. There's no doubt that nuisance, phone calls and texts are a major headache for many of us, and the government is keen to clamp down. Individual companies can already be fined up to half a million pounds, but they often declare themselves bankrupt to avoid paying the penalty. Targeting the individuals behind those companies would close that loophole. The regulator Ofcom estimates that consumers were bombarded with 3.9 billion nuisance phone calls and texts last year. The Information Commissioner's Office has issued £17.8 million in fines since 2010, but only about half that sum, 54%, has been collected. This isn't the first time the government has announced a plan to fine individuals. Back in 2016, the government said there would be a change in the law in 2017, but that didn't happen. This time we are issuing a formal consultation uh, which is the first step you take before actually introducing the legislation. Well, I would hope to have it, the consultation, done by later this summer and I would hope to be introducing, it's, it's secondary legislation so we don't need to find, you know, a huge time slot off in the distance. My ambition is to get it in by the end of the year. The government is hoping it will have better luck second time around. Andy Moore, 